All right, let's talk about the 1978 history book, A Distant Mirror, The Calamitous 14th Century by Barbara Tuckman. This is a book that I picked up because of Steve Donahue. He did a, a book club about it. And Steve Donahue, a great fixture here on YouTube as, uh, as a book critic who turned YouTuber, uh, when he picked this book, I was like, oh, okay, this is a century that I'm interested in, primarily because of what comes after it. Um, a lot of the chivalric works, uh, a lot of like kind of Don Quixote, a lot of Shakespeare uh, with references to uh, the Hundred Year War. It's it's an era, it's an era that I hear a lot about from from other from other works but i've never actually kind of gotten the information on it itself and I, so i was like well it's a history book on the 14th century that sounds kind of dry as dirt it's like you know one of these survey books that's looking at a whole century it's like how good can it be but oh well you know steve donahue is is recommending it so you know it can't be that bad it must be pretty okay so i i decided hey okay i'll pick it up and read it and i am so so very glad i did because this is one of these books where it's yes geezly long but it really reads really quick and really well. It's well, what a well-written book. Um, Barbara Tuckman has such a kind of distinctive, uh, sometimes very sarcastic voice um, when she's um, kind of, she's not afraid of putting her own opinions in there, spicing them in there. A uh, little, little, not, not like overlaying. So it's like, oh God, I can't see what's happening because this author keeps on wanting to tell me about what's happening. But just enough that it's like, ah, keeps you keeps you kind of um awake keeps you kind of like uh, alive to the to the topic um and it, it's like it's one of these centuries where it's like oh my god so much so much happens uh this is definitely this is the start of uh the uh the black death the plague hitting europe this is when this is a, when i say this is a history of uh, the 14th century of course it's a sorry it's a it's a history of European 14th century uh, and uh, with a big focus on France and England uh, and then a little bit of sort of Italy and uh, various other various other regions, the the, the uh, Holy Roman Empire, Hungary, all this stuff. Um, but yeah, you get the plague, you get the Hundred Years War. Uh, you get uh, the schism in the church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church. This is when you get, um, I mean, there's always so many different things that are precursors to the big split of when you go, go from just Catholic to Catholic and Protestant. Uh, this is very much like a lot of the rebellions, a lot of the dissatisfactions with um, that are going to be like the Protestant Revolution, that are going to be the French Revolution, the, 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 the explosion of democracies. This is the stagnation that happens before the Renaissance. So uh, it's a really kind of fertile thing. And there's a lot of those themes of like, you know, are we going to have kind of reform to the church? Are we going to have a better political system? They all get like people try, but at this point, the incumbents crush everything. Um, and by the end of the book, uh, we're back to a sort of simmering status quo until things are going to really explode uh, in kind of the era of kind of the Renaissance uh, and that and that era. Uh, Tuckman does the uh, kind of the narrative technique. This is very much a popular history. It's not intellectual, uh, a kind of university thing. This is something that's actually meant to be read by other human beings. So she does a really good job of bringing you along, telling you, you know, what people's lives were like back then. She does not assume that you know anything about the 14th century, which is a very good, was a very good assumption to make for me. So you get, you get ideas of what it was like to live in this century, what we, what it was like to, what you were believing, like this whole thing of you very much, this is, I, as a very secular person, just kind of the overwhelming presence and domination of religion uh, and the corruption of religion, uh, how corrupt the institution of uh, the Roman Catholic Church was at this time. Uh, simony, uh, paying, paying for your sins, all this sort of stuff. Um, was very much, very much in force here. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, she uses the narrative technique of fall, of picking one guy to kind of follow throughout this, uh, a French, well, 
kind of French, kind of English noble. He he ends up with connections to the uh, the English uh, aristocracy as well through marriage. Is Ed, uh, Ed, um, uh, Ged, Ged, Edouard uh, Cousy. Um, and at first, you're, I was sort of puzzled. It's like, why are you following this guy? He doesn't seem any much more notable than any of the other people. By the end of it, you realize that he is actually a foil for how terrible his fellows was. He was probably uh, the best, the best of a bad lot uh, in the in through the book. Um, I said that I came through this book. Uh, one of the reasons I came through this book is like I've I've had this kind of fascination with chivalric works uh, coming from. Uh, Don Quixote, which is like, you know, we're we're now like hundreds of years uh, ahead with uh, Don Quixote. But uh, he he uh, in his library, Don Quixote's library, there's all these works of chivalry. And I've been reading I've been reading some of them, Amadeus of Gaul, um, various various others. Uh, um, Bl oh, blank. I can't remember what that, that one was named, but various works like that. And. It was. It's interesting to kind of come back to a time when people proposed that they were actually following uh, chivalric codes, like Degussy, um, uh, um, Degussy uh, were following chivalric codes, and he actually sort of was. But it really gave you the sense of like, oh yes, you you show honor and you follow the rules with your own class. But outside of that, peasants and stuff, you feel free to just butcher them and do whatever the hell you want. And indeed, war, warfare was just unending misery, uh, whether through taxes or actual kind of brutality upon uh, all the poor bastards who, who lived under these complete assholes. And you start looking at chivalry as, oh, this is an ideological cover for these people to act really, really terrible as much as... Uh, the church is kind of at saying like, you know, oh, all this material stuff is terrible. We should only focus on the spiritual while at the same time in the complete hypocrisy, enriching themselves, sleeping with women, uh, you know, just all the kind of just hor horrendous kind of hypocrisy. Uh, they talk about the Victorians being hypocritical, but oh, my God, uh, the people of medieval time. uh uh, whether it's the church or it's the nobility, where it's equally, equally as hypocritic, hypocritical. Um, but yeah, he, he actually serves as kind of a familiar face as well, kind of going through this book. Uh, Tuckman does a really good job of, she'll give you grand scope, but then she'll just zoom in to like great, great, just little details talking about, talking about specific things happening in the century. And also just like, you know, I'm, uh, stuff like, you know, with marriage that, you know, love was never a thing about, uh, marriage, marriage was never a thing about love at this point. You didn't love your wife. That was, you married them for political reasons, at least in the aristocratic, aristocratic section. But she also does zoom in on actual guys who's like, yeah, he actually loved his wife and they had a really good relationship. And it's like, oh, okay, these aren't alien beings as well. She's she's really good at humanizing the people that she is talking about who are so very, very far, far in our past now. Or it seems very far in our past. I mean, this this whole thing of the book being called A Distant Mirror is that you can really see things reflected in our times in this book. And yes, it was written in 1978 and maybe it was talking about that time. But no, you look at it now and you see um, the super rich of that time being sort of exempt from the ta the very taxes. Uh, you know, what their their goals were had nothing to do with actually taking care of other people. And you look at our time now of kind of glorification of, of rich people, uh, of how how um, taxes are used to prop up their uses, but they don't actually pay taxes themselves. All that stuff seems very familiar. And I mean, the whole thing with the plague, you go, oh, OK, this was seriously serious plague where we're talking a giant a good hunk of the population died off during this time and indeed didn't start climbing back out of this thing until like into the 15th century before uh, the, the population of Europe actually started reaching back up to the heights that it had been at the start of the 14th century, this disastrous 14th century of war and plague and religious um, strife. So um, 
that's sort of a thing where, you know, we've just gone through, we still are in the midst of a pandemic, uh, that the, those, 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 you can, you can feel, you can feel that and, and the fear and the misunderstandings that they had seem very vivid to somebody who lived through, uh, the last couple of years now. So a distant mirror really kind of makes sense on that, on that stage. Yeah. Just Tuckman is just such an engaging writer. It's definitely one of these people of one of the things I, I learned about history is it's like, don't go by subject, go by writer. If you can find a writer who can write really well, just follow them, whatever the subject they're interested in, make yourself interested in that subject, because that is a way to have a real success in reading. So I will most definitely be going back to Barbara Tuckman for more of her books. She had a good, she had a good long career and did a lot of writing and I'm going to, I'm going to find more of those that, that will, that would be great. All right. I will leave it there.